so be, before I talk about the clip and why I thought that this would be a good clip to show in this context, I just want to thank Sundance. Um, and I really look forward to being on this panel to have the opportunity to do that because I was actually here at the first Sundance Film Festival in 1985 with the Times of Harvey Milk. Um, and it was a really different world then. Um, it was hard to get a film with a, a gay theme in a movie theater or to get a, a distributor to, to really take the risk in taking on a documentary or especially a gay themed documentary, but uh, that certainly wasn't true for Sundance. Um, and they've been such great supporters of, you know, each of the films that Jeffrey and I have done since then. So I'm really pleased to be, be back here again. So this clip, um, after, the, after the Prop 8 defeat, I thought about this scene a lot. And I thought about uh, the courage that it took for, that's actually Harry Britt in that scene. Harry Britt was Harvey's appointed successor. Um, on the Board of Supervisors, and this was, you know, a few months before the assassination. And Matt, you can certainly uh, augment this, because Matt was in San Francisco then, as was I. But Harvey was very clever, because he set up, a, you know, a multi-tiered strategy, helped to set up a multi-tiered strategy, where he was, you know, he was the front person, so he could get, get out there and try and get the attention of the president and take on Briggs and and be on the news every night, but he also understood that there had to be uh, a, a, a very well-grounded and well-organized grassroots campaign. Um, he helped set that up in San Francisco, and, and Harry uh, was very instrumental in that. And they trained people to go out and do what those people were doing in, in that scene. So we all felt the kind of responsibility and obligation to get out there and do that very brave thing, which is to just try and engage people on a one-to-one on a -one level. And I think that's ultimately what Harvey's message was. You know, that's really what his, his, um, his rallying cry was, that, you know, we each have the power within ourselves to be true about who we are and honest about who we are. And, and that's, you know, that's how change happens. I guess for me as a filmmaker, um, my only other thought is that I've never thought of myself as an advocacy filmmaker, so I've never thought of myself as an activist filmmaker. Um, but in truth, the... the um, Rob, if you're not an activist filmmaker... Well, I'll tell you why, because I think of myself as a storyteller, and I think that's where you can achieve the best, have the most effect, uh, is really through... I think activism can have its greatest effect through good storytelling. And if you can get an audience to identify with the, you know, with the characters and the obstacles that they're up, to, up against and, and the challenges that they face, then that's how you really bring an audience in. So that's, that's how I've always approached films, which may have had some kind of activist result, I hope. Um. I'm, I'm trying to mix up people who have clips associated with them and those that don't. So I'm going to go now uh, to Cooper, um, who you all know and just learned how to know better. So. Yeah, I'm clipless. Um, I could have had some clips, but I don't. Um, I could have some clips of my wedding, which would be really fun to play. Um, uh, of course, I'm here for Sundance. I totally agree. I don't really think of myself as an activist at all in any way. Um, Sundance is really, to me, a... Uh, uh, it's a cultural organization that does the same thing. We try to put stories forward that are going to um, enlighten society and change society in a lot of different ways. Um, the two biggest factors we choose in, in choosing films for the festival and for the labs is originality of story and originality of the way that story is told. So even if it's a straight up love story, if it's told in a new way, that also draws us to it. When it has both, it's even better. But um, so we kind of actually just, there was no queer stories out there. So the originality of story, we just got it covered. So every time 
a queer story came along, well, we've never seen that before, and we've never seen this before. So it almost is this organic just thing, and so that's why, you know, in the early days, I actually got criticized a lot for showing too much queer cinema a few times by filmmakers that get rejected, of course. Um, you know, there's always someone there to complain, that's what I know. Um, but, you know, that's kind of, we've just been there, and it's kind of happened very organically. Um, you know, some, I remember my first year was Longtime Companion, and it won the Audience Award. And that's what kind of shocked me. Like, I, I knew we were showing Longtime Companion, but I never thought we could show that film here in Utah, even, even in the industry, even if it was all industry people, that wouldn't become like the audience choice, the one that people voted on. So I thought, okay, we're on to something here. Another kind of interesting night of note um, was when we showed a midnight film called uh, Vegas in Space. Um, it was so off the wall, and like everything goes, can we really show this? It's like, yeah, we'll put it at midnight, but no one's going to show up. And I remember Alberto Garcia and I at the time were sitting down at a bar and go, let's go down to the theater. Let's, you know, because the filmmakers are there and you know, they have their whole cast and let's like talk them up so they don't feel bad. And we walked in, it was just loaded with drag queens from all over, <laughs> all over Utah. And it was just like, okay, we're on to something here. You know, so, um, you know, we just kind of been plugging along, doing our, doing our work. So that's all for me. Okay. Um, I think next, um, Dana, you have some clips here, right, for us to see. Why don't we see those clips and then, and then hear from you? Those are the next ones you've got on the reel, right? So when we made those, I think, you know, part of this group called Homo Tracker, which is gays and lesbians in the film and entertainment industry, um, and there's a group of about 40 of us, and the day, you are? Ooh, the day that the, the marriage decision came down, it was literally like an outpouring of emotion like I've never seen from a group of pro professionals before. I mean, literally everyone was just saying how they were crying at their desk and how this affected them. And we just, you know, started talking about what we could do to help, you know, especially when it became apparent that Prop 8 would get on the ballot. You know, we thought, as filmmakers, what do we have to offer? Um, and especially as young filmmakers, we decided to make a PSA specifically designed for the younger generation who maybe at the time we thought wouldn't hear about Prop 8, which we were, we were wrong about, but, um, you know, who also, it was a very tricky matter between, you know, you vote no if you're for gay marriage. So, you know, we just decided the best way to do that would be through humor because all the ads that we were seeing were so serious and just not speaking for, you know, people 18 to 34. So that's what we created, and you know, we made four PSAs for about five hundred dollars. Every single person donated time and energy and everything, and we were really proud of the result. Um, okay, I think um, the, uh, we have some kind of reel of um, that you wanted to show, didn't you? To kind of. Uh, give us a view of some of these ads. Can we see that, the third uh, set of clips you have? Great, thank you. Um, Rashad, can we go to you now? Um, well, you know, GLAD, um, GLAD is an organization, it's a 501c3 organization. What that means is traditionally, you know, because of tax law, we don't participate in political campaigns. We, we work to educate the public through changing hearts and minds, through holding the media accountable, through monitoring the media, and pushing for fair, accurate, and inclusive images. Um, but this time around, for the first time, our organization, you know, took out the, the proper kind of papers and, and got directly involved with Proposition 8, and then really put our money where our mouth was um, because um, we knew the importance of it. Um, <laughs> And, and and what and what I'll and what I'll say, you know, and I'll, I'll speak, you know, very briefly. Both kind of, you know, as a person who worked directly on the campaign, and as a young, you know, African American who who saw, um, you know, who saw both the aspects of people who look like me vote against me, and um, and who saw, you know, kind of, you know, this incredible aspect, you know, this kind of, you know incredible racism that came out afterwards in the media. And some of it was overblown, but some of it was very real. 